Each year, Clarivate names citation laureates, a select handful of influential researchers whose work is on par with Nobel Prize recipients. Since 2002, 75 of these citation laureates have later received a Nobel Prize. I'm Rebecca Cranbuehl from Clarivate, and today we are honored to have with us Professor Pablo Jario Herrero, a distinguished physicist based at MIT whose groundbreaking research in the field of condensed matter physics has earned him this prestigious recognition. Professor, thanks for being here with us today. I thank you very much. I'm very happy. Now, you are known for your pioneering work on twisted bilayer graphene, and your discoveries have opened new frontiers in quantum materials and have had a profound implications for future technologies. So I'm curious to learn from you, what sparks your passion in your work? So I'm passionate about scientific discovery. I always tell my students that I see ourselves as explorers in the middle of the jungle, searching for a hidden scientific treasure. In my field, condensed matter physics, we study the collective behavior of many particles, for example, many electrons. And it is very difficult to predict the behavior of such systems. As a result, one has to couple you know, some theoretical guidance with good intuition about where new electronic behaviors may arise, what kind of materials, what tuning knobs to turn. So there is a lot of exploration. Some people like to know exactly what they're looking after and what they're going to find. For me, it's not like that. I like that sense of mystery. You have an idea of the direction where you're going, but you do not know exactly what will happen along the path or precisely what lies at the final destination. And that for me is really very stimulating and, and that's really what drives my passion. Amazing, thank you. It sounds very exciting. <laughs> my next question for you is, what have you learned from the challenges that you've faced along the way? Um, there, there are always many challenges in research. You know, so some of them are purely scientific, like things not turning out the way you thought or the way you hypothesized. Others can be technical, like an important instrument breaking in the middle of an experiment. Other times they can be more human, such as a team member experiencing, experiencing a difficult personal situation. These are often the most difficult ones since you have much less control uh, of how to solve them. In any case, in all of these, I have always found it very useful to stay calm, to reflect on the issue rationally, to try to solve it, and that, you know, in the end, no matter what, things usually end up turning out okay. So it's always good to keep perspective. You know? it's, it's never the end of the world, you know, there's always a way out. So one lesson I have learned is that it is okay to make mistakes. And it is very important to learn from the mistakes that we make. You know, another lesson is that um, usually things are harder and take longer than you expect. But that is okay, because if an experiment is too easy, that, that means that plenty of other people you know, who have done it before are doing it at the same time. So one more thing is that it is good to give independence and flexibility to young researchers, the graduate students and the postdocs in my group. I think that they are much more motivated when they perceived that they are leading the exploratory work and they often come with surprising directions for research. So trusting and empowering young people is a good recipe for success rather than micromanaging. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, I'm also wondering, what would you consider the real world impact of the work that you've done? So, so my group's research investigates the quantum electronic properties of new materials with a focus these past few years on more quantum materials that result, for example, from stacking 2D materials on top of each other with a relative twist angle. So my group's discovery of superconductivity in twisted bilayer graphene back in 2018 sparked this new field, and there is a large community of researchers working on more quantum matter. In the span of a few years, with this community, my group, but also together many other groups, what we have found out is that we can realize pretty much all of the behaviors of quantum matter, superconductivity, magnetism, ferroelectricity, topological insulators, etc., all of them, using just a few simple building blocks, like graphene. Usually you need very different materials for each of these behaviors, but with more systems, you can get it all in one. This means that there are very fundamental 
scientific principles that govern the behavior of quantum matter and that they do not depend as much as we thought on which elements from the periodic table we put together to form a material. If we understand fully these basic principles, then we can use them to design new materials with desired properties that could be very useful for technology, from energy research to quantum technologies, and that could change the world. As an example, you know, we could design much more powerful superconductors, which could be used for magnets in fusion energy systems, or superconductors that could be used in advanced quantum computing and quantum sensing technologies. To some extent, and maybe at a scientific level, I'm not sure what you mean by real world, but this is already happening. You know, this field of twistronics, which my group started, which is moving beyond electronics now to other fields like twisted photonics, twisted phononics, twisted electrochemistry, so it's impacting many other areas and subfields of physics or chemistry and material science, because people are implementing some of those basic principles, well, there's not a few, not all of them, but some of those basic principles in order to realize new scientific applications and new technologies. Oh, it's fascinating. Thank you. It sounds like there's, you know, it's a fundamental thing that has a lot of different, a, a, a broad reach on many different fields. Indeed. Quite yeah. exciting. Super. Thank you. Now, my last question for you, I'm curious, which qualities you think you need to become a great researcher? And is there any advice that you might offer to young researchers other than what you mentioned um, before? So I think that there are many qualities that are important. One is natural curiosity. I think people who are naturally curious, they tend to be better researchers. Others have to do with being highly motivated, scientifically ambitious and self-driven because then you don't mind working very hard, which is usually essential to become good at anything, okay, in science or otherwise. And perseverance is another one, so that you can go through the ups and downs of research and life in general. Yeah, so it's important to stay focused, perseverance. And maybe finally, I'd say a risk-taking attitude. Because to have a great impact, one needs to go beyond incremental work, you know, to try to you have to try to leapfrog, take some big step, which includes risk and uncertainty. So to the young people, I always tell them to take risks, yeah. intellectual risks, scientific risks, and to not let anyone put a glass ceiling on their aspirations. Usually young people have a lot of energy and creativity, and it's good to give them freedom to explore, as I mentioned earlier. At the, at the same time, I also tell young people to try to work with the best people that they can access. This has been very important in my own career. You learn so much by working with people that are very good and know more than you in one or several directions. If you, you know, if you always find yourself to be the smartest and wisest person in, in the room, in the, your research environment, that is not a good sign. Ideally, you should surround yourself with people that are as talented, if possible, better than you, at least along some axis. And fortunately for me, that happens a lot at MIT. I'm constantly surrounded by people who are way smarter than me and way better than me in many things. So that's something that, that I'm very fortunate uh, uh, about. Amazing. Thank you. That's great advice. So thank you so much for joining us today, Professor. It's been such an honor to learn more about your inspiring work in physics and the impact that you and your collaborators have had on our world. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Pablo Jario Herrero has been recognized as a Citation Laureate 2024 alongside Alan H. McDonald at the University of Texas at Austin and Rafi Bistritzer at Tel Aviv University. If you'd like to find out more about the Citation Laureates, visit our website at clarivate.com slash citation laureates.